of a sudden impact. The first new PGM-FI feature we'll look at is the variable intake manifold, which is only found on the 2.3. This helps refine engine performance and maximize engine torque during all types of driving conditions. It does this by making sure there's a strong intake airflow available at all times. At lower engine speeds, in this case anything below 4,800 RPM, it achieves this by delivering air to the engine through long, thin inlet tracts. To keep a strong intake airflow at engine speeds above 4,800 RPM, the ECM-controlled butterfly valves are opened, which also allows intake air through the shorter, fatter tracks. Also located on the inlet manifold is the air boost valve. This allows an additional amount of air into the engine during cranking and immediately after the engine has started. The extra air makes it possible for the engine to burn the extra fuel injected at this stage to aid starting and so reduces emissions. And while on the topic of emissions, Every 600 is equipped with a three-way closed-loop catalyst and heated oxygen sensor. Located in the exhaust manifold on both the 2 litres and in the exhaust downpipe on the 2.3s, they help improve exhaust emissions by reaching their operating temperature very quickly. The final feature we'll look at, again unique to the 2.3, is the double-circuit exhaust manifold. Here the exhaust pipes from number 1 and 4 cylinders and the pipes from 2 and 3 are paired together before they join in the downpipe. This helps reduce back pressure in the exhaust and offers the benefit of heating the catalyst to its operating temperature faster. Now onto the self-diagnosis side of the system. If a fault occurs in any part of the system monitored by the PGM-FI electronic control module, the orange malfunction indicator lamp on the instrument panel will illuminate. The fault code, or diagnostic trouble code as it's now called, is now displayed by the same malfunction indicator lamp on the instrument panel. To make it display the diagnostic trouble code, or DTC, you'll first need to locate and bridge the service connector. You'll find that midway down the left-hand A post on right-hand drive cars and on the opposite side on left-hand drive models. Once bridged, switch on the ignition and count the flashes. The short blinks are still used to indicate single digits, while the long blinks still indicate ten. If there's more than one fault, the ECM will leave a gap of about two seconds between each trouble code. A complete diagnostic trouble code index is published in the service repair manual. To clear the ECM memory, just remove the 7.5 amp backup fuse in the engine compartment fuse box for more than 10 seconds. Microcheck, together with Microlink, should be used to carry out more thorough diagnosis on the PGM-FI system, if required. And finally, just a quick mention of engine tuning. Like other PGM-FI systems, an idle speed adjustment screw located on the throttle body can be used to adjust the idle speed, while the ignition timing can be adjusted by loosening and rotating the distributor. So to summarize, the main features of the new engines are the light alloy cylinder blocks are produced using the new die casting method. All 2 litre and 2.3 litre engines feature balance shafts to improve refinement. The 2.3 litre cylinder block features fibre reinforced material liners and a closed deck design. All Rover 600s feature a hydraulically damped engine mounting, which will be electronically controlled on automatic cars. 
The 2.3-litre engine features variable intake, air boost valve and a double circuit exhaust manifold. All 600s are fitted with heated oxygen sensors. The PGM FI self-diagnosis feature is triggered through the service connector and the diagnostic trouble codes are displayed on the instrument panel. Now on to transmissions. The same five-speed manual gearbox is used in all versions of the 600. Although the gear ratios in third, fourth and fifth will vary from model to model. The box has been developed from the box used in the 216-416 range. To improve shift quality, the third and fourth gear synchromesh capacities have been increased and a main shaft brake has been added to eliminate the snagging that can sometimes be experienced when selecting reverse gear. It works during the first stage of selection as the new synchro ring, which is locked to the main shaft via the synchro sleeve, is pushed against a tapered ring, which is locked to the gearbox casing by a stopper ring. This breaks the main shaft, bringing it to a standstill, allowing a clean engagement of reverse gear. And finally, you should note, instead of steel rods, two cables are used to connect the gear lever with the gear box, a shift cable and a select cable. Servicing of the cables is limited to lubrication only. And if you do experience a problem with either cable, always replace them as a pair together with the housing. Now on to the automatic transmission. The transmission used is the E4AT electronically controlled 4-speed with torque converter lockup. And although it uses very similar technology to its predecessors, its construction is quite different. In addition to the main shaft and counter shaft, it features an intermediary or secondary shaft. This three shaft construction allows for a much more compact design. Also new is the seven point selector lever. Conventional park, reverse and neutral positions and then D4, the equivalent to D or drive on older models. In this position, upshifts and downshifts will occur automatically through all four gears and torque converter lockup is operational in second, third and fourth gears. In D3, gear changes occur through the first three gears only and torque converter lockup is limited to third gear. The sports mode offering delayed upshifts is also available in D4 and D3. Two, or second, will give you second gear only and engine braking. And finally, one, or first, will give you first gear only, again with engine braking. The engagement and control of the gears is electronically controlled by the Transmission Control Module, or TCM, which is located in the passenger's footwell, adjacent to the PGM-FI ECM. And this also incorporates a self-diagnosis system. In this case, the S light on the instrument panel will light if a fault occurs. And with the service connector bridged, it will flash the diagnostic trouble code. And remember, the PGM-FI and the E4AT circuit are interconnected. And some PGM-FI faults will make the S-light come on. So always check out any indicated faults very carefully. To clear the TCM memory, remove the backup fuse in the underbonnet fuse box for more than 10 seconds. And like the PGM FI system, MicroCheck together with MicroLink will allow you to check the system more thoroughly. Finally, there are seven different pressure takeoff points strategically placed around the transmission. They'll help you diagnose and accurately identify problems when fault finding. To round up the main points of interest on the transmissions.